So I had a follower reach out to me. She's having issues with her horse, um, getting it over the fear of a saddle blanket. Now, I don't have a horse that is scared of a saddle blanket, but I have Cricket, who the videos that she sent me of this horse, the way it's behaving and reacting, reminds me a lot of this mare when I started her under saddle. She's a little more timid. She is definitely well aware of your body language. She's in tune with you and focuses on somebody just pretty hard in the way that you react. She's going to react based off of that. Um, so I do have Cricket and I have a turnout blanket here and she's never had a turnout blanket on. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to kind of demonstrate here how I would go through this with a horse that is like this, kind of break it down with you guys. So when it comes to horses and people generally right now, it's kind of a fad that I would say that a lot of people will take an object when a horse is scared of it. And I talk about this when it comes to desensitizing a horse, right? A lot of people will take this scary object that a horse doesn't particularly like and they'll sit there and go don't react stop react stop reacting stop reacting stop reacting stop reacting okay you're done reacting good job you're looking and chewing good and they come in too hard and too aggressive really quick that right there when it comes to a horse that's not very confident yeah i know cricky that's not very confident coming in too aggressive is definitely not gonna you know help at all right there my body language she like I said she is in tune with my body language she reads off of people really well and she will react based off of my body language other people will come in too timid and don't be scared Ooh, easy and kind of get stiff and first thing they want to do is put that scary object in that horse's face now Cricket here, she's not having necessarily a reaction right now, but you can tell by her body language, she's reading off of me and I'm getting stiff. And you can see here, she's kind of uncomfortable. She's going to sniff it because she's definitely had more training than this horse in the past. This horse that um, I'm trying to help out here. But the way you approach a horse with your body language is when it comes to a horse like that is actually going to tell them how to react whether people realize it or not being relaxed and confident with your body language and breaking things down is actually going to help a lot more um in instances like this you know you could see we're coming at her too aggressively like i did she had a reaction backing up and she's like oh my god what do i do um, you could see if I'm approaching her timidly with this, you could see her, she's tensing up, she's blowing at the nose. My body language is timid, she's reading off of me. I'm going, please don't react, please don't react, be okay with this, be okay with this, be okay with this. And you can see right here, she says, I don't want to be okay with that. You are telling me with your body language not to be okay with that. But if I were to come in confidently with this and I'm going to sit here and talk, and move this around and stuff like that and just kind of be like, whatever, I'm not scared of this. You shouldn't be scared of this. You know, you could see right away, her body language is different even though I'm whipping this around her face. She's kind of looking at it and she's looking at me, but because of my body language and what I'm doing with my body, my body's relaxed. And I could probably just, just like that. And she's kind of like, whoa, what just happened? That's that was weird, you know? And it's the same thing when it comes to scary objects, when it comes to putting a saddle on for the first time, your approach and your body language is really going to have an effect on how this horse behaves. And so, because horses communicate how? by With body language, right? That's how they communicate to each other most of the time. There's vocal cues and stuff like that too, obviously. But primary source, the reason why, how horses communicate is body language. If I was a mare standing right here next to Cricket and I pinned my ears and look at her, what would she do? She'd move away. That's how horses communicate. So being confident in your body language is gonna go a long way. So we're gonna grab this turnout blanket here and we're gonna kind of judge how she reacts to this. I'm gonna hold it up 
And you can see she's pretty, she's uncomfortable with it because she moved away. She's not snorting. She's not blowing. She's kind of looking at it here. But what I'm going to do is we're going to say that Cricket here had a big reaction to this. Snorting at it, blowing at it, runs away, whatever. What we're going to do, we're going to throw this turn blanket out here. And we're going to, you know, lay it out. She notices it. She knows it's there. What we're going to do, what a lot of people want to do in a situation like this, is want to hold that scary object up in that horse's face and go, look at it. Stop reacting. Look at it. Stop reacting. When it comes to a reactive horse, the last thing you want to do is reassure their fears by going, don't be scared. <laughs> That is the last thing you want to do. You want to teach that horse to ignore the scary things and look to you for guidance. I've talked to you guys a lot about looking or training your horses to think before they react. This situation right here is exactly how you're going to do it. I have a lot of people ask me, how do you do that? I'm like, put them in situations where they have to. And then this situation is going to be kind of referring back to my last video as well. Teaching your horses as well to look to you for guidance in scary situations versus dwelling on the scary object in front of them. What you wanna do is teach a horse to ignore the things that are scary and look to you for guidance instead of dwelling on that scary thing. So I would kind of do things here, knowing that she's, see, she's not wanting to kind of go by it there. Knowing that she's not really wanting to go by that. I just do some groundwork here working with her and every time I notice that she her attention gets off of me like right there I'm gonna bump her and get her focused on me again right there her tension's off I'm gonna move kick that hip out something like that we're gonna change directions make sure we get both them eyes you can see right here she's she's focusing on that on that turnout blanket on the ground right there instead of focusing on me hey we're gonna kick that hip out and get her attention on me and what i'm asking her to do versus what she wants to do and dwell on that object and see you notice here she's starting to lick and chew she's not kind of balking at that anymore she's starting to there we go starting to focus on me there she box at it so I got her attention I kind of threw that rope out there and said hey pay attention to me what I'm asking you to do kick that hip out there we go and this is where things where I've told you guys like getting shoulder control and control of that horse's hips is really gonna come in handy because when she gets distracted I could say hey move them shoulders like that hey Kick that hip out, kick that hip out, kick that hip out. There we go, focus on me. And just kind of get to where we could start doing, getting her focus on me. There. Right there I kind of popped her because she was so focused on that that she wasn't paying attention to what I was asking her. She was just sitting there going like this, so. And so doing stuff like this, whether it's under saddle or on their under saddle on their back or on the ground, doing stuff like this, getting their attention to you, just laying that out there on the ground there, and then just ignoring it. Teach them to ignore it. That it can be there. You know, you want your a horse aware of their surroundings. But you don't want them reacting to, to their surroundings. See like right here, she's trying to focus on that. So I'm kind of jiggling that rope, getting her attention back to me. Hey, hey, hey. There we go, like that. And you can see she's uncomfortable with this. There we go. And see, she's really kind of right here because of this being on the ground right here, she's starting to crowd me. And we don't want her crowding me, so we're gonna focus on. Hey, there. Hey, get off of me. Focus on 
you know, giving me some space. There we go. Like right now isn't necessarily what I'm doing isn't correct lunging, I would say by any means. But our primary focus is to get her focusing, focusing on me versus that turnout blanket right there. She's looking at it, so we're gonna, hey, focus up. There we go. And this right here, lunging this horse around and getting her to go in circles, I want you guys to notice that I up my energy to get her attention on me. But as soon as her attention's on me, my energy comes back down. Lunging this horse isn't about right now getting energy out of them so that they're too tired to react. Lunging her right now on the ground is all about getting her attention and her focus on me so that she's waiting for me to tell her what to do instead of focusing on the scary object. This is the look to me for guidance moment. And if I were to just come here and expect her to lope around in circles, keep her loping and trotting in circles until she's in a sweat and she's too tired to react to that anymore, I didn't teach that horse anything. When I'm teaching this horse, I mean, she's moving her feet around a lot at times, but my focus, the reason why I'm moving her feet is saying, hey, focus on me, not get that energy out. And you can see here now, going this way, she kind of looks at it. Right there, she looked behind her. But you can see she's not really having, she's not spooky at it. Hey. She's just paying attention to it now. She's not blowing at it. There she goes walking by it, licking and chewing. So now we're going to, hey, hey. Go this way. There, give her a good pop because she's not paying attention. She knows better. But you can see here this way, she's still kind of like comes into my space a little bit, looks at it. But, um, and she's balking at it just a little bit. But we're not necessary. So now when she goes at it, what I'm going to do is ask her to either kick her shoulders or her hip out and focus on me. See right there, her attention came back onto me when she was looking at that blanket. Get your hip out. There we go. <laughs> I got a little intense, so she got a little confused right there. Get off of me. And so when she comes into my space, I make sure that I get, hey, get out of my space, because we don't want to teach this horse to crowd me kind of thing we want her to look to me for guidance and be her safety net and you can see now that she's starting to she's starting to calm down a little bit she really likes going the other direction lunging this direction for her it's always a little bit more difficult than the other direction but we're working on it but you can see now now she's even stopped willing to stop and face it right here. You know, she's not really paying attention to it. So the next thing I might do is come over, kind of work on shoulder control. Like that. You see, she, because she was focusing on what I told her to do there, she actually stepped on it right there. See? and she's not having a reaction to it. Now, if I were to come out here and try to lead her across this right away, when I first turned it out here, we would have definitely had a reaction to that. There we go. There we go. And she's kind of blowing right now because I'm standing on this blanket. But you notice that all of these things that I'm doing I'm ignoring this, this blanket. I'm not giving her any reason to pay attention to it with my body language at all. And see, now we're standing right next to it. And I bet you if I did this, whoop, there we go. Nope, still needs a little bit of work there. There we go, see? If I would have tried that in the beginning, we would not have 
had her walk over that. She's a little stiff, but she probably wouldn't have walked over that as confidently as she did. She probably would have stopped and tried to sniff it. She probably would have jumped. She would have gone around it. She would have fought going over it. So now that we got her realizing that this isn't something we should really be paying attention to, now we're going to work on um, getting her to where we can get this blanket on her. Cricket's never been blanketed with a turnout blanket before. And you can see she's a little weary of the situation. And our next step is this. So you could do something like this with an old saddle pad. This is something that I do, just teaching those horses to ignore it, pay no mind to it. A lot of times horses have pretty big issues with stuff on the ground and walking over it. And if you could get them to start walking over it and ignoring it and not putting it in their face and reassuring their fears, then the next step of trying to get it on them is gonna be a lot less reactive. So, I mean, think about, you know, water crossings, for instance. I've seen hundreds of horses that you can bathe with water, and they'll stand there being bathed. But as soon as you try to cross a creek, they lose their mind. So, now that we got this kind of in a situation where she's ignoring it, she's in the mindset of paying attention to me, I'm not, the first thing I'm going to do is not try to put this in this horse's face. I'm just going to kind of do things like this. And if she were to start reacting, what I would do is I would start kind of lunging her, getting her to move her shoulders, getting her to move her hind end, getting her focused on what I'm asking her to do instead of what this blanket is doing. So if she was having a reaction right here, then we'd go back to, hey, look to me for guidance. Think before you react kind of thing. And so instead of going to her face, like a lot of people do with horses, they think that the first thing you need to do is go to the face. I always go to the shoulder. Um, not the barrel, not the face. The face, a horse doesn't want something that they think that it is potentially going to eat them to go straight for their eyes and mouth. You know, um, a lot of times going for the shoulder, a horse is going to be more confident for them going for the shoulder. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to just do that and be done. That's it. And notice my body language here when I'm doing this. We talked about body language in the beginning of this video. I am not going, get over it, <laughs> you know, coming in aggressive because that caused a reaction. And I'm not going, don't react, don't react don't react and she's like what are you doing why is your body language being scared but you're telling me not to be scared your body language is telling me to be scared of that because look at you you're going it's scary <laughs> my body language is don't be scared you're fine just like that that's how i do it and obviously i'm not going to put this turnip blanket on her and all of that stuff and leave it on because it's 40 degrees today in February. But this is a really good example showing you guys kind of the process behind it and all of that. And you can see here we're not, because we worked on the ground with her, getting her to look to me and ignore the scary thing, she come to realize there is no reason to be scared of that. There's none. Now, Cricket has a lot more experience. She's been ridden, she's gone and done a lot of things. She's a little more, she's a lot more confident than a colt would be. You would most likely get a reaction out of a colt right here. But in that instance, I'm not going to chase that colt around and say, stop being scared, stop being scared, stop being scared. In that instance, I'm probably going to do something like put this blanket over my arm and go to, hey, working them. To where they're focusing on me instead of the blanket you know lunging them around so that when this blanket moves around they're not freaking out and having a reaction to it they're waiting for me or doing what i'm telling them to do they're too busy focusing on what i'm asking them and then pretty soon they forget so if you have a cult that's reacting to this stage where you can't do this with them go back to working them and getting them focused on you 
So after you do that, I generally, like I said, I start at the shoulder. The shoulder is a safe spot for you. It's a more confident spot for a horse in general. Um, like I said, a lot of people like to go directly to the face. I don't like to go directly to the face because like I said, no horse wants the scary object to jump out and eat their eyes and mouth. So starting here at the shoulder is kind of a more neutral area and then working your way around this horse and working your way up to the head like this and then retreating. This is the point where you're going to have to really use your intuition and you're going to have to read this horse really well when you start getting your hands on this horse with this scary object because it is very easy to overdo this and push to where you get a reaction, especially out of a reactive cult that is very in tune with your body language. Keeping yourself calm and yourself confident, kind of treating that horse as if it was a broke horse that all of a sudden decided to be scared of the spray bottle for no reason. <laughs> Going, come on, let's get better at this. You guys know, you know better. So you don't want to start here and go, oh, we're fine, we're gonna move to here and then get a violent reaction out of that horse where they set back and run off from you. You're gonna go in and out of their comfort zone with something like this and build their confidence. And so you'll start here. And this is the same thing, like if you guys are putting hands on a Mustang or something for the first time, this is what I do with them, just with my hands. And you just work up to a place that they might have a reaction. You could see that the, she, right here, she's uncomfortable and kind of push it right to that edge of you can tell they're uncomfortable but they're not reacting they're thinking about it and then you go okay we're done right here we're good just like that don't push them to have a reaction because all it does is reassure their fears and you do that with you know going here coming down all oh, right there's a goosey spot i'm not gonna push it right here we're just going to rub it right there for a second. She got kind of goosey. was like, ooh. Look at her. Look at it. And there we go. We're done. Just like that. And now I'm not going to go from here. I'm not going to go, all right, let's throw the blanket on and strap it down and turn her out. You know, we're going to do both sides. You know, we go to here. You could see her watching and she's kind of tense. We're just going to go. There we go. We're good. So now... We're going to drag this around to this side. Ooh, right there, see? And I'm not, my body language right now, everything that I'm doing with this horse, I am not reassuring her fears or reassuring her in any way with my body language, with how I'm communicating with her that she should be scared. Everything that I'm doing right now is how I would treat a broke horse and coming forward confidently. So we're going to go for the shoulder. This is the off side, so we're going to start from the beginning. Go up kind of towards the head here. You can see her, she's getting kind of tense. Good. No reason to be scared. And if at any point in time she ever started having a reaction during this, um, depending on how big of the reaction, I might drop the blanket and go back to getting those shoulders under control, moving the hind end, getting her focused back on me, backing up. But never am I going to reprimand her for her reaction. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get her attention and focus and get her back under control. Because if she were to have a big reaction and I were to react to that and get aggressive and reprimand her for it, all you did was reassure that horse of their fears of that thing, of that object. So we're gonna go here, coming on this hip. She's actually doing better on this side. See, she's kind of moving away right here. And I just followed her with it. There we go. Now right there, I do want to say, she moved out of the way right there and kind of stepped around, but she was calm about it. She was kind of more like, you're pushing on me, so I'm moving my hips. Versus, oh my God, I'm scared. If she were to have a big reaction and kind of blow sideways there, I would drop the blanket and then I'd go, all right, let's get them shoulders. Get your mental state back. Come on, get your mental state back. 
and work on, you know, getting her back to mentally present with me versus running away kind of thing. And so I would do something like this, just drop that blanket and say, all right, focus back on me. Ooh, okay, ooh. Now go, all right, let's back up, let's back up. Get control of those feet. You know, move those shoulders, move that hind end, get you loosened up physically and mentally because when a horse has a reaction to something because they're scared, they blow up, they get tight. Not only physically, they don't go <laughs> and then blow, their mind does the same thing. And so doing stuff like that, getting their attention back to you without being aggressive about it, it's just being calm. It's just, hey, focus up here. You know, look at my body language when I'm telling her to do stuff here. I'm not, unless she gets into my space here, I'm not getting aggressive with her. I'm just going, hey, you know, do what I ask you. Back up, back up, back up, back up. You know, I'm not getting after her and getting aggressive with her and just going, all right, let's do some stuff. Let's get your focus back on me. And then after, you know, we get her loosened up physically and mentally again, guess what? We're going back to the blanket. And we're coming back to this object. And we're going to drag it around just like we did before. You see right here, we're kind of having a bit of a reaction. I'm just petting her. I'm not shoving it in her face more. I'm just holding it right where it was. And since we had a reaction right there, we're just going to stand here. I'm going to pull it. There. Everything about my body language right there was telling this horse to be calm just like that and so now we got her to the point where we could touch her all over she's not having a reaction she's a little timid but she's not freaking out about it she freaks out about it kind of being drug around on the ground but now she's kind of just following it she's not moving away from it see how she's looking at it she's moving her hips away from me because she know I'm actually telling her to do that but she's not freaking out. So now that we have her to this point, we're gonna get her stopped here. And we could touch her all over with this blanket. We're gonna come up. We're gonna put that blanket up there. And we're just gonna go, good girl. Look at that. You got a blanket on your back. She's never been blanketed before. Now we're gonna Ooh, this blanket probably would never fit you in a million years anyways. Big old brat. Right there, look at that. Right here. Ooh. See right here, I'm not freaking out. Not reprimanding her. We're just going to kind of let this play out here. We're going to pull it up. Like that. And see, I just kind of stopped her prevented her from having a big reaction. So what I'm gonna do here, since the issue is that blanket around her butt, we're gonna push that butt around and loosen that butt up because that butt got tight. So we're gonna get it loose, just like that. Wow, now we're gonna go this way. Hey, don't run me over. I'm gonna make sure it doesn't fall off. And do the same thing. Move that butt around. Loosen it up. And you see right there, that could have been a very bad explosive reaction really quick. I didn't get tight and tense. All I did was, whoa, hold on, focus, let's readjust. Now we're going to send her out. Video kind of cut out there for a second, so we're going to recover kind of what I said there. Um, because we worked with this horse and got her mentally present and with our body language, kept it cool, calm. We didn't reassure her fears by shoving something in her face. We didn't overwork her. She's not mentally shut down. She's mentally present. She's thinking about stuff. You know, she's a very timid horse. And so stuff like this, it's new and scary. She tends to think a lot about it. But this horse now, 
she hasn't broken a sweat. She's a little warm in the chest and a little warm in the girth area, but it's also 40 degrees in February. And we worked on getting the thankful for your act. Your body language never told this horse to freak out. Your body language never told this horse that you should be scared of this. Your, all your body language did this entire time was sit there and say, it's okay, calm down, it's okay. And so now, see what happens when we even pull this blanket off, because a lot of times, even when you go to pull a blanket off of a horse for the first time, that's a whole nother experience. After they've adjusted to it being on them, pulling it off can be a whole nother issue. Look at that. I pulled it off aggressively even on purpose to try to get a reaction out of her. And we don't have a reaction. You know, she's still responsive to me. She's thinking things through, but she's not scared. Huh. And then, let's see here. Look at that. Do you think if I would have walked out here the beginning of this session, we would have been able to do this with this horse? No. She would. If I would have tried this at the beginning of this video, this horse would have been dragging me down the road. Now, granted, Reba is not a cult, or Cricket is not a cult, you know. She's never been blanketed before, yeah, sure. But she also has been ridden. She's done a lot of things. And so she's processed things a lot quicker than a cult would. I would not necessarily expect to be able to do that with a cult most of the time by the end of a session. We didn't also spend two hours doing this, too, I want to point out. This was because I've stopped and talked so much. It has been 45 minutes total, probably. Um, but it, I didn't need to spend two hours doing this, getting this horse worked up and lathered into a sweat. 